Mr. President. Senator, <clears throat> Senator from Minnesota. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I came here to the floor to talk about Medicare. My esteemed colleague from Alabama just talked about Medicare reform. Um, you and I, we all, all of us pay in to Medicare every month, and so we are entitled to Medicare benefits when we reach age 65. The fact that we are entitled to these benefits is not a bad thing. In fact, it's a very good thing for so many millions of American seniors. And the fact that many call it an entitlement only means that we have a right to expect to get the benefits we paid in for. Entitlements in this case should not be a pejorative. Uh, we've heard a lot about entitlement programs recently and about the place of Medicare in the conversation about our, our federal deficit. We just heard the senator from Alabama talk about that. And he said, there's no discussion of reform of Medicare. But sometimes in these discussions, sometimes I think a critical component is missing, which is that we already reformed Medicare. And these reforms extended the life of Medicare by eight years, while expanding benefits for seniors. During the recent campaign, as the presiding officer has pointed out, we saw a lot of ads about the so-called $716 billion in cuts to Medicare and how terrible that was, is, and will be. Well, I'd, I'd really like to take just a, a few minutes to explain what these savings are, what they, what they were and what they are and what they will be. The two biggest sources of the $716 billion were one, ending the overcharging that insurance companies overcharge the government for Medicare Advantage, and the second is savings in payments to hospitals. First, Medicare Advantage. Now, as the presiding officer knows, as people watching no doubt know, that seniors can choose to get their Medicare benefits directly from the Medicare program or to get them through a private insurance program that gets paid by Medicare, which is called Medicare Advantage. Well, before we uh, passed the Affordable Care Act, we were overpaying those private insurers by 14%. These insurers were getting much more than they should have based on the benefits they were providing to seniors. So we cut what Medicare gives to these private insurance companies. That was. Over the next 10 years, we are going to cut these insurance payments by 14%, which CBO scored in 2010 as saving Medicare $136 billion over 10 years. And we were told by some of our colleagues that insurance companies were going to leave the market, that we weren't going to have Medicare Advantage anymore. Well, so far, Enrollment in Medicare Advantage has gone up by 11%. So this is many, many billions of dollars that we are able to take instead of overpaying insurance companies, they were able to take it and extend the life of Medicare. Now, second is the lower in reimbursements to hospitals. Now, why does this work out for hospitals? Well, 
when you insure 31 million more people, when those 31 million people go to the emergency room, go to the hospital, the hospital is no longer on line to pay for that. They're not left holding the bag. When those, thir those 31 million people now have insurance that pays for it. So the hospitals are now able to take lower reimbursements for Medicare patients. That's why it works out for them. So when people talk about the $716 billion, this is a huge part of what they're talking about. It's not cuts to benefits. It's not shifting costs to seniors. It's streamlining the program and making it more efficient. We took these savings and we reinvested the money in the program, which overall extended the life of Medicare by eight years. That is entitlement reform. Extending the life of the program. That's what we're talking about when we talk about reforming Medicare. And that is what we did. And not only that, but we actually expanded benefits for seniors. Now, I go to a lot of senior centers around Minnesota, nursing homes. And I got to tell you, the seniors are very happy that we extended, expanded their benefits. They're happy about the new free preventive care that they get wellness checkups, colonoscopies, mammograms. They know an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. This saves us all, all money and keeps people healthier. And what else we're doing with this money in, turn, in, in addition to, you know, expanding the solvency by eight years, we're closing the donut hole, the, the prescription drug donut hole. And I have to tell you, seniors are very happy about that too. For more, more than one third of seniors, for them, Social Security provides more than 90% of their income. For one quarter of elderly beneficiaries, Social Security is the sole source of retirement income. So when they hit their donut hole, that is serious. And sometimes they have to make choices between food and heat and medicine. And because we're closing the donut hole, in many cases, people don't have to make that choice anymore. This is important stuff. When I was running for the Senate, a nurse who worked in Cambridge, Minnesota, a town north of the Twin Cities, she came to me and she told me, that in the hospital she worked in, very often they would admit a senior who was very sick, and the doctors would treat the senior and get them back on their feet and send them out, send them home with their prescriptions. And as this started to happen, they would call the drugstore, the pharmacy, a few days later, a week later, and say, is Mrs. Johnson, has she filled these prescriptions? And the pharmacist would say no, because she was in her donut hole. Well, a couple weeks later, Mrs. Johnson would be back in the hospital. How wasteful is that? How, why, why is that, 
that costs a tremendous amount of money to our system. This is saving money. This is health care reform. This is Medicare reform. It's improving people's health and saving money at the same time. So we have increased benefits. We've extended the life of Medicare. That was done as part of health care reform. That is Medicare reform. Now, in the election, we had a discussion about this. There were a lot of ads about it. We know what Governor Romney would have done to Medicare. He said very explicitly that, and again, the presiding officer has quoted this. He said very explicitly he would restore those billions and billions of dollars in overpayments to private insurance companies for no reason for no good effect, just so that, I guess, these insurance companies could have more profit. Instead, we reinvested this money into Medicare. But he would have given it to the insurance companies. He would have replaced the health care law, which would have made the eight years that we extended Medicare just vanish. Governor Romney supported raising the Medicare eligibility age. But if we raise the age from 65 to 67, as he suggests, that means that millions, hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of seniors would no longer have access to Medicare, would end up receiving federal subsidies in the exchanges and some of them would go to Medicaid. And they would be, the 65 to 67 year olds, would be by definition older, and as a po population, sicker, than the other people in the exchanges and in Medicaid. So they would make both of the programs more expensive. They'd also make Medicare more expensive because they would be the youngest and least sick to be taken out. So although this sounds like a reasonable compromise, trust me, it is a bad idea. It would cost the health care system twice as much as it would save Medicare. This is exactly the kind of bad idea that explains why we pay twice as much as other developed countries around the world for our health care, and in many, if not all, most cases, with worse outcomes. Medicare reform was an issue in the campaign because we already did it. We extended the program by eight years. And it's not like it was a secret. It was part of the conversation during the election. And in the election, the American people voted to keep those reforms. So as we continue this conversation about our fiscal future, I would love to hear from my colleagues across the aisle about how they would reform Medicare, how they would expand its life by eight years while expanding, or at least, at the very least, not cutting benefits. How would they do it? Because we extended its life for eight years and increased benefits, very meaningful benefits. And I would ask my colleagues why before the election, and this is the very point that the presiding officer from Vermont made just a few days ago on this floor, why they were attacking us incorrectly, I might add, inaccurately, for making cuts in Medicare 
But since the election, they've been insisting that we make cuts to Medicare. So going forward, I, I just think we need to move from talking points to taking a thoughtful look at policy and working together to tackle our nation's fiscal challenges and to do it based on a little bit deeper look at what we've done and what the health care reform that we that we pass here in the, in the Senate and in the House and is now the law of the land, what that does. Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, I yield the floor.